So New World has finally dropped the full details of this brand new character known as Empress Jo, at least the starting details of her backstory. This is an article posted on their website where they seem to give us a full account of what appears to be a questline. It starts off with the narrator stating, he hasn't seen us in these parts, and comes to an end with him directing us to a woman named Zhang Lingyun, the former handmaiden of the Empress. The story itself tells a tale of the Empress in her youth, starting off by telling us that her first name is Tai Ying. She is the firstborn daughter of the Emperor and the Empress of the Zhou Dynasty in China, where many of the citizens in Ebonscale Reach come from. She is described as a bright young woman that's destined for the throne and for greatness. Fast forward a bit and we learn about her half, illegitimate brother, Shang Wu. As Tai Ying grew, she quickly won the hearts of the people and gained a loyal following largely due to her intelligence and beauty. Because she rejected the many suitors that pledged themselves to her, a support for her half-brother grew in secret, and instead of remaining loyal, he took full advantage of this new support in organizing an army. On the night before her coronation was set to take place, Shang Wu stormed the palace with armed forces to try to drive her from her home. As a result, she was forced to flee with her most loyal supporters with the goal of one day returning to China to claim what was rightfully hers. But when she was young, she heard rumors of Eternum, the land of eternal life. And so, just as the Siren Queen came here for a better life for her and her people, the Empress followed suit. It also specifically states that she sailed the Atlantic. Just pointing that out because I have seen theories of Eternum being similar to the Bermuda Triangle, or of course, the lost city of Atlantis. Now the narrator describing the tales tells us that he was also on this voyage. Unfortunately, just like so many others, they did find Eternum, but their entire fleet crashed upon the storms, and they washed up on the shorelines of Ebonscale Reach. Something like this didn't stop the Empress though. She was determined to gain power and reclaim her homeland. She traveled inland and met with an agent of corruption who promised her power, eternal life, and the revenge she was seeking. Empowered with corruption, she converted most of her loyal followers into what serve as her corrupted dynasty ranks, also known as New Types of Corrupted. Some people were able to flee, but ultimately the Empress had been building an armada with the goal to not only reclaim her throne, but make a stake on the world as well. Now this information is big in a lot of ways. Let's start with the fact that at first I thought the Empress was shaping up to be the new leader of the Corrupted, mainly because of this specific tweet, where the background Corrupted strongly resembled the ones in the Game Awards trailer. But now, she seems way more like just a puppet than anything. And also it says an agent visited her and turned her for the Corruption. Now by default, I wouldn't be surprised if our good pal Isabella was the one who reached out to her. But in actuality, what if it was something or someone else entirely? After all, we did talk about how the Corrupted seemed to be more organized and more functional than a band of mindless zombies. Wouldn't be much of an organization if Isabella and probably Captain Thorpe were the only two lieutenants on the scene. So what if there's another mystery character they're waiting to blindside us with? But here's another thing that's important to mention. Judging from Isabella's clothing and weapon choice, clearly she's got to be coming from the 17th or 16th century. 15th at the earliest. But this entire article seems to confirm that the people here and the Empress were actually based off the historical Zhou dynasty. And if that's the case, these people including the Empress are now literally hundreds if not thousands of years old. Unless they are somehow just a version of this civilization that existed in this world's version of the 17th century. There was a quote during an interview with GamesIndustry.biz that's been burned in my mind ever since it was said. The quote comes from Scott Lane himself where he described New World as having elements of mystical time shifting and that the marketing hadn't really hinted at that aspect, until now in my opinion. So there's either going to be a very big plot hole or a mind-blowing revelation about what's going on here. But I think the simpler theory is that Isabella and the Empress never initially met. I think whoever corrupted Isabella was the one. Because as we know, she's clearly not the big dog either. But I'd bet all the chicken nuggets in the world that there is at least one behind the scenes. And this makes me wonder even more about Hazel and the Ancients. If the Empress was almost immediately met by someone of the Corrupted, this must have been after the mountain had already shattered and the Ancients were already gone. Which in my mind further pinpoints Hazel as actually being hundreds if not thousands of years old as well. If this is the Zhou Dynasty from 1046 BC that is. And the huge storm that surrounds the island has me super curious. See we don't know if there are other things that happen when we pass through it. But I think I'll save that discussion for another day. I need to do some more research first.
Oh, also, somebody did bring up a pretty good point in the last video when it comes to us not potentially getting katanas with this zone, which is probably accurate now that we 100% know it's Chinese-based. But as they mention, there are other weapons that come from Chinese culture that are very similar, or were the foundation for their inspiration, like how katanas are based off the Chinese Tang Dao. I think if we were to receive a weapon like that, or even the Chinese horse chopper, that would probably fulfill a lot of the same experience. Plus, also, I would take a horse chopper either way, because that would be a great temporary substitute for when we get great swords, which I'm still really hoping happens at some point. But alas, folks, that's all we've got for today. Highly recommend you read her backstory and let me know what you think the fight and the encounter with the Empress will actually be like. One thing I can't shake is since she's building an armada, what are we going to do with those ships once we completely lay waste to her army? Well, I can think of a few things off the top of my head, but maybe they're saving that for an expansion. Wouldn't even mind if we ultimately had to build our own ships and chase after her after she somehow escapes. I mean, we've got to have at least one veteran shipbuilder on this island, right? Have a wonderful night or day, folks, and farewell.